When we watch football on television, it's difficult to get perspective on just how big and strong the players are because they're all big and strong. So our question is, what would happen to a regular guy if he goes up against an NFL player? Could an average guy survive the lineup scrimmage? To gain some perspective, we hit the road and travel to the Sports Science Outdoor Testing Facility. And to help us conduct this test, we recruited a man who personifies the raw power and brute force of the NFL. All pro defensive tackle, Chris Jenkins. Chris is one of the hardest hitters in the NFL. With textbook technique for exploding through an offensive lineman. When I want to get under a man's pads, it has to do with my explosion. I'll start with my feet, and I'll roll up through my hips, and I'll put everything into my hands. And then when I explode, everything rolls up. To execute this experiment, we need an average guy. So we scraped the middle of the barrel and came up with this guy, sports science host, John Brinkus. Standing five foot eight inches and weighing 160 pounds, John is aggressively average. Chris Jenkins, we've measured a lot of collisions in football. Now, one thing that we really don't get at home is the perspective. I mean, how big are you? 6'5", 360. Okay, I'm 5'8", 160. So when was the last time you were my size? Seventh grade, I think. <laughs> seventh grade. So what we want to do is a one-of-a-kind experiment. We're going to have you, the NFL superstar, going up against me, the average Joe. We're going to go mano a mano, head to head, and measure that collision. To measure the impact an average Joe would experience on an NFL lineup scrimmage, we're wiring up both test subjects with cutting edge hardware. Both Chris and I are going to be wearing an inform accelerometer around our waists, and this is going to measure the transfer of energy from him to me, which can't be good for me. If he's going to stand over there, I'm going to toss him. And I, I'm going to do it as hard as I can, and for as far as I can, and I'm going to get as mad as I can. It's going to be the real thing. Look at I can't even figure out how to get my arm through this. This is not good. <laughs> While our host struggles with the incredibly difficult task of putting on a jersey, Chris does some simple warm-up exercises. That guy is a beast. He's pushing the two-man sled all by himself, just like it's nothing. The average NFL defensive lineman weighs almost 300 pounds, and he battles offensive linemen who average about 320. So our 160-pound lab rat is clearly in way over his head. You look like a kicker. I hope all the average Joes out there appreciate this, because I'm about to get my bell rung. Let's do this. Time to find out how an average guy would try to stop an elite NFL defensive lineman. the question, what happens to a regular guy when he goes up against an NFL player? Well, 
he goes up. Data from the Inform accelerometer reveals that at the peak of his flight, John's head was almost nine feet off the ground. All of that power drives straight into John, producing this tremendous collision, transferring all of his energy across, literally throwing John out of the way. So how much force did Chris use to launch John into orbit? Our cutting edge motion capture technology reveals the answer. John's mistake is rising up too quickly, which raises his center of gravity, decreasing his stability. A smart lineman like Chris stays low and aligns the angles of his body for maximum impact. He does this by creating two 90-degree angles with his body's big levers, the arms and the legs. His shins are in line with his forearms, and they draw a straight line through the center of his target. By creating this straight line, his optimal foundation of leverage, Chris is able to launch John with 600 pounds of force. And worse, John returns to Earth with a painful 1,600 pounds of force. And if we extrapolate this data, the numbers are amazing. The average NFL game has over 100 plays, and in each play, about a dozen players collide at the line of scrimmage. The sum total of these collisions generates a staggering amount of energy, 32 million joules. That's over seven and a half million calories. Believe it or not, that's enough energy to launch a 160-pound projectile, like our lab rat, over 28 miles into the air. Well, it was fun. I haven't uh, had a chance to throw shot putt since high school, and it felt good to be able to launch somebody. And even after such a punishing hit, our lab rat was so committed to getting the science accurate that he took another hit. And another. And another. No one bothered to tell him that, in fact, we got plenty of data from that first impact. And he didn't really need to take all those extra hits. Oops. Oh.